All right, welcome into Blackboard Breakdowns, year number three here on QB Confidential. And uh, I want you to remember that these are connected to the playbook. So we've got the playbooks where we're designing full field plays, putting concepts uh, that we've established over the first couple years, putting them together. And then I'm coming here on Blackboard Breakdowns and I'm discussing the reads that go with those and, and why we put these two concepts together and what a quarterback needs to think depending on the coverage that they may be getting in a particular situation. So um, that's what we're gonna dive in today and we're gonna kinda go side by side playbook and we'll come here to Blackboard Breakdowns, then we'll move to study ball and try to stay with these same concepts to give you numerous looks at why we're doing what we're doing, how it plays out, and then hopefully how it plays out on the field so we can see the different nuances of that as well. So let's go ahead and dive into combo slant first play that we put in where we connected two concepts together. So it's already drawn up here for you. Uh, so now we're gonna talk about the read. All right, so let's start over here on the left-hand side. Uh, I remember when I was talking in playbook about how combo is designed for a middle closed defense, which we've already discussed in Blackboard um, at the, the beginning stages of this. So middle closed, meaning we've got one safety, closing the middle of the field, okay? So middle open is two safeties where the middle of the field, you've got a seam down the middle of the field, middle closed, middle of the field has a player in it. So we're looking for a middle closed situation here. We've got that with the free safety in the middle. All right, so um, why we're looking for a middle closed situation. So what I want you to understand is, and uh, in most situations when you get a middle closed, okay? So what we call either cover one, or cover three. Uh, we've got our corners on the outside to go along with the free safety. And then you've got four underneath guys. See the strong safety right here, the wheel linebacker, the Mike, and the Sam. Okay, so we've got four guys underneath. All right, so in most situations, and again, going back to the early stages of blackboard breakdown, we talked about a balance cover three or a push cover three. So really when it comes down to playing football, uh, it's like any other sport, that we're trying to outnumber the defense. So here's what we're going to look at first and foremost. You notice that we've got strong safety, wheel linebacker uh, or on one side, and then we've got the Mike linebacker and the Sam linebacker on the other side. So when you look at this combination uh, over on the left-hand side combo, all right, we realize that we've got our three guys, right? One, two, and three guys over there. So that's where we gain our advantage. Two linebackers, three receivers, we gain an advantage and we force them to have to move, okay? What we're really trying to do on this particular play is quarterback's trying to hit the slant. So he's coming out and he's reading this flat defender right off the bat in cover three. That flat defender holds on the slant, Boom, we reset, I shouldn't say we reset, we shift our weight and we hit the, the flat on the outside. This Sam, our strong safety, outside linebacker type, flat defender chases the flat. Now we're ready to hit the slant right behind it. Okay, so we know that there's another body right there. So we read the outside backer, flat defender, looking to hit uh, the slant. And then from there, as we're going to hit the slant, we have to feel this next linebacker. So it's not as much of a read off of this next linebacker. Eyes are on the strong safety, ready to hit the slant. This wheel linebacker gets into vision. You feel him getting out of there. Boom, now we check it down to our back. So we get the advantage over there when we've got a middle close defense because we've got three on two. And that's why I talk about spacing be, being so important that we gotta make sure that we stretch those two defenders with our three receivers so it's important, depending on where the combo is on the field, that the back is in a tight enough alignment um, where we can truly stretch those guys and they can't cover uh, one zone and cover two receivers. We've got to put them in three different zones. So this is our middle close beater, so to speak. And again, it's about numbers. I've got three on two. I like it. Now let's go to a pushed cover three. So let's say for some reason, They move over here and they've got three underneath defenders to our three wide receivers. 
All right, so again, we don't have a numbers advantage over there. Even though primarily in cover three, we're looking for a balanced cover three. We believe in a two by two set. It's going to be more balanced most of the time. But if for any reason they push, they push the defense uh, over to one side, to the combo side, okay? Normally we don't like the double slant against cover three. And normally we don't like it is because there's two defenders inside. So you'll notice on slant, right? We've got two receivers coming inside on that play. If we have two defenders to the inside, we don't throw slant. So normally, again, balance cover three, we're working the combo side. They go to a push cover three. Now you have to ask yourself the question that even though it's a middle closed look, how many defenders do I have inside to the double slants? And we realize in this particular case, there's only one inside. So anytime there's only one defender inside on the double slants, you can read the double slants. So it doesn't matter the coverage, but we're really looking for underneath defenders. So normally two by two underneath, we're going combo side because we get a three on two advantage. They push it over, give us three guys underneath. Now we would read back to the slant side in that rare occasion where we only have one guy inside to the double slant side. All right, so that's how cover three is normally going to work. So with that being said, I just told you that double slant, we only read it when we've got one defender, okay, one inside defender to that side. So cover three, if we got cover one, okay, so again, cover one, man to man across the board, um, all of these guys covering man to man, you really have your pick. You know, which side do you want to go to? Which corner is off? Which is easier access? Where's their leverage at? All of those things can apply, but the beautiful thing about this play is everybody's alive in man-to-man -man coverage because it's not about numbers underneath anymore because everybody's playing man. Now it's about positioning. So it's a good man-to-man -man play. Uh, love slants against man-to-man, -man, but any of these guys could pop open in man-to-man. -man. All right, so middle closed. Most of the time we start with combo. We look for the push of those linebackers. If they're not pushed, we stay over there. If they push, only one underneath defender to the slants, we can work back there in our middle close look. Okay, now we're gonna open the middle. Okay, so that means there's two safeties back there. Okay, now we could, we could have two different things that we look at here. All right, so we could have, we know middle open defenses could be either cover four or cover two. All right, so cover four, we'll keep these corners back a little bit deeper because obviously they've got a quarter responsibility, deep quarter of the field back there. So usually in an off position there. But again, we're looking at numbers, all right? So as we did in cover three, uh, we, we realized that, okay, we're looking at the underneath defenders, those second level defenders, linebacker type positions um, when we're talking about numbers. Okay, when we get to a quarters look, okay, the numbers obviously start with the linebacker position again. So I know a lot of people would look and go, okay, look at the combo side. There's only two linebackers underneath, so we could probably still read the combo to that side. In essence, that wouldn't make sense. But what we have to realize is that this safety now has come down into a position to take away our slant. Okay, so we have to, again, we're counting numbers but we're seeing the positions of those numbers. So if this guy was in the middle of the field, there's nobody to take away the slant. That's why we gain a three on two advantage against with a middle closed defense. When this guy drops down into a quarters look, now we notice that they're in a great position for Will Linebacker to cover the flat, his responsibility. Mike Linebacker can hold in here and cover the back, his responsibility. Strong safety in a position if we try to throw this slant in here to blow up our receiver or even jump that slant and take it away. So now our numbers are one, two, and three, and their numbers are one, two, and three because we have to look at the positions and the places we're going on the field, the zones we're trying to attack, and if they've got guys in each of those zones, we don't gain an advantage. Okay, so that's why in a quarters look, we don't really like the combo side. Now, 
With that being said, there's times that this will linebacker could be tucked inside and some people will say, hey, if you get leverage on the flat, you can just come out and take the flat. True, you can do that. You will have that leverage sometime. But in this particular play, I'm trying to hit a slant if a slant is available. That's what I want on this play. I'm trying to hit the play that can be a bigger play for me. So don't like that slant with the safety down in quarters. So don't really like the combo side because they've got three against R3. All right, so now we're looking at the other side, okay? The first thing we're looking at is how many defenders do we have underneath, okay, or inside. We've got one. We said that uh, when we were talking earlier, I can hit the double slant anytime I've got one defender to the inside on that side. So I know from that standpoint that I can read the double slant side, okay? Now you're gonna ask the question, well, you've got a safety in that same spot for the double slants, um, as you do for the slant on combo, okay? And that is true, yet we have to understand, and this is going back to the beginning stages of Blackboard Breakdown, we have to understand the responsibilities of all the players in the defense to understand where we go with the football. So, what is this guy's responsibility? What are the safety's responsibilities in quarters, okay? Oftentimes they're reading the number two receiver, so that would be the F or the Y here. Okay, as soon as the F goes to the flat on the left-hand side, that frees the strong safety up to know I have no responsibility. There's nobody else that can beat me down the middle of the field on my side except the X receiver. So now I've already got inside leverage on the X receiver. I can sit and hold my position. Now I'm in position to take away the slant. Okay, on the quarter side, on, or sorry, on the slant side, we've got quarters over there too. But now what's the difference? the inside receiver is pushing vertical down the middle of the field. So first responsibility for this free safety is not to take away the slant on the outside, but to not allow anybody to attack them down the middle of the field. That's what we're trying to do. I'm supposed to hold leverage if I'm this safety inside the number two receiver. He goes flat, don't have to worry about it. He goes vertical, I have to worry about it. So this is where it opens up the double slant on the other side. Still reading the Sam linebacker to whether I throw it inside or out, but I'm gonna trust that that vertical push by the Y is going to hold this free safety in a position where he can no longer drive and steal the outside slant. So now this is where we gain the advantage on double slant with a quarters look. Push that vertical down the middle. This guy wants to hang wide. That guy wants to hang wide. That strong or that same linebacker is not taught to run down the middle of the field. He's going to try to take away the inside. But once we get past him, if that free safety wants to stay wide, we're going to have a free shot down the middle of the field for a big play. But that's probably something we're going to have to notice beforehand that their free safety is playing wide. Otherwise, we're going to simply just assume that he is going to hold his position inside, give us an opportunity to hit the slant on time outside off of that Sam linebacker, right? I'm coming out and this is one of the things. I'm never trying to force the inside slant. I'm always thinking outside slant, outside slant, outside slant, with the inside slant simply being a reaction to what the Sam linebacker does. So I expect the Sam linebacker to be inside of the Y and if I come off and he holds inside of the Y, boom, balls out to the Z right now. Okay, there's no hesitation. I'm not even really trying to get the Y. I'm simply just verifying that this Sam linebacker holds his position and I get the Z out uh, on the slant on time, okay? And then if I go to hold this guy and he takes off running outside, I am going to react inside to the inside slant, put it on him as fast as I possibly can. But it is simply a one defender read to that particular side because we only have one defender inside understand why we don't like it, uh, the combo side against quarters. All right, so cover three, thinking combo side, unless they push it, then we get one defender inside, we can go to the slants, man to man, we're good across the board. Quarters, thinking double slant side, only one defender inside, that's why we put our back away also. Talked about the back going to the combo side because we like it against looks where there's two backers underneath, but what it also does is we wanna make sure that that mic doesn't go to the side of the double slants. So we're gonna use our back in this situation to go away from the double slants. Mike is usually going to mirror to the back, that three receiver side, giving us one defender to the backside 
on the double slants and we also don't have our back getting underneath the inside slant and making it easy on the defense. All right, last coverage we usually talk about, cover two, okay? Basic coverages we're going to see is what we're going to talk about here. Hit me up uh, on email and with the questions if there's some uh, other things that you want to see because we talk about the combination coverages at times as well, all right? So here we are in cover two. And in cover two, we're looking at the same things. It's about numbers. It's about numbers. So we look at the combo side against cover two. What do we got? We got one guy out here sitting in the flat, waiting for the flat. We got a wheel linebacker sitting in the hook area, waiting for the slant. We got the Mike linebacker in the middle that can take away the back. So again, they've got three against our three. We have no advantage. So now we're looking to the other side. Okay, we've got one defender inside. Okay, so again, remember I said inside. We got two routes coming inside, so I'm looking to see if we have one defender inside. Yes, we've got another defender down in the flat area, but we don't have anybody going to the flat. We're running away from them to the inside. His responsibility is to stay outside of our guy and force them back inside. Perfect, we've got what we want. We don't worry about the corner there. We've got one defender inside and now we can read him to the double slants. We don't worry about the safeties because no longer does the safety have help outside, so they're usually going to play deeper and not be in a position to take away slants in cover two, so that doesn't become an issue for us. Safeties are out of there. Now it simply comes down to the numbers. They basically have three defenders, once again, to the left-hand side to match our three receivers only one defender inside to the right-hand side of the double slants. So now we're working double slants. All right, so this is how we're going to, you know, break down this particular play. Again, all about numbers. When we're attacking zones, it's all about numbers. So we would do the same thing. Let's say this guy dropped back and they played a combo coverage. Okay, so the combo coverage was what we called, in this particular case, we'll call it cover six, okay? So it's what we would call quarter, quarter, half. So on the left-hand side, from left-hand to right, we've got quarters to the left, we've got half field to the right. So once again, you simply just look at your numbers from there. What did we say on quarters? We don't like combo against quarters, right? Because they've got three guys, strong safety, Will, Mike, to match our three guys, okay? We got cover two, look over to the right. We just said we like double slant against cover two because we've got one defender inside and underneath on that side don't worry about the safety we're good to go okay so you're just applying the same rules depending on what coverage you get let's do it the other way let's say they rolled up and went cover five so they rolled up and went half quarter quarter okay so now we're looking at the same thing right look to the left three guys underneath to match our three guys underneath we look to the right quarters we already said we like this against quarters because there's only one underneath defender to that side. So again, we mix and match these things based on the numbers that a defense has in the areas that we're attacking. And that's what it would look like for our combo slant combination. All right. So you see it right there. That's how we start breaking down these plays. That's why we put them together. There's not a single coverage that we can attack with combo slant in the quick game. Just gotta know how it mixes and matches, where the numbers are, who takes away the different routes, right? Not just the second level guys, if a safety is in a position to take away the slant, okay? So if he's in a position to take away the slant, we need something to hold him vertical so he can no longer take away the slant. We do that with a double slant combination. So a lot of details that go into all of these little simple plays. But once you start to get it, once you start to understand the numbers, who you're attacking, what the responsibility of the defense is, why we combine these two concepts together, now you start giving your quarterback answers. As a play caller, you start answering all the questions that could possibly be out there. Now you're feeling confident with these kind of combinations against whatever a defense can throw at you.